Hello again. So now I want to talk about large CVs versus small CVs when we use typically use large control volumes and when we typically use small control volumes. And uh, start writing what is the kind of um, uh, flow rate idea in uh, fluids. Okay. So, and after that, we will derive the uh, hydrostatic pressure equation in fluids using a small CV. And later on, we will use the large CVs to drive the mass conservation equation, okay? So, here we have a system, a channel, say, a fluid, where we have V1, velocity at point 1, and then a velocity at point 2. And now we want to investigate this system and say how much the fluid exerts a force and this, uh, say, on this part, okay, on this part, we want to say how much it exerts a force and how much uh, we need to design kind of something to uh, keep this uh, fluid channel in place, okay? So this is F external. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a large CV that kind of includes all of these components. So I define, you can define CV control volume based on the problem that you face and as the way you like it and it fits the problem, okay? So we have a large CV here that we define it. And then we have a section one and here we have section two. The flow goes out of that. And based on the mass conservation that we are going to also uh, talk about it later, mass in CV is constant in a steady flow. If you have a steady flow, the amount of mass inside that CV is going to stay constant. So now I want to investigate this. So dear, during delta T, the volume that enters into this CV is what is V1 times delta T this is going to give me here the delta x, right? V1 times delta t is going to give me delta x1 times A1, the area at here, which I call it A1. So this is the amount of volume that enters into this CV during delta t. And mass in, the amount of mass that is into this uh, control volume, we can just calculate it by multiplying density of the fluid times volume, right? This is the definition of density. Density is mass over volume, so mass is going to be density times volume, which is going to be rho 1 times, this is the density, the volume, we have written it here, so it's going to be V1 delta T A1. And we can also call and calculate mass flow rate in the rate of the mass that goes into the control volume is going to be rho 1 V1 delta T A1 over 
delta t. And so these delta t's are going to cancel out and we have rho 1, v1, a1. So this is going to be mass flow rate in. And similarly, the mass flow rate out, mass flow rate out of the control volume. So this is the mass flow rate that comes into the volu uh, control volume. And the mass flow rate that goes off this control volume is rho 2 v2 a2 similarly okay so rate of based on this thing that i've written here rate of change of mass in the large cv should be zero for a steady flow, right? So if I have a steady flow, the rate of the mass that comes in and goes out should be equal. Because if they don't equal, it means the mass is gonna increase here inside the CV if the inflow is larger than outflow, or if the outflow is larger than inflow, it means the amount of mass here is gonna decrease. So in a steady flow, the mass flow rate, because the mass in CV is constant, so the rate of change of mass in the large CV should be zero. So this means the amount of mass or the mass flow rate that goes out, rho to V to A2, minus the amount of mass that comes into the CV, rho one A1, V rho one V1 A1, equals to zero. So this is the mass conservation for this large volume. And similarly, we can define momentum flow rate that comes in. So what is momentum? If you remember, momentum is mass times velocity, right? So the momentum flow rate that comes in, I just need to multiply the mass flow rate that comes in, which is this one, times velocity, right? I just need to multiply this by velocity to get the momentum flow rate that comes into the uh, control volume. So it's gonna be rho one, V one square times A one. And the momentum flow rate that goes out, I just need to multiply the mass flow rate that goes out times the velocity at this point, which is V2, okay? So it's gonna be rho two, V2 square, A2, And now I can write the Newton's second law, rate of change of momentum, is what dmv, if you remember from Newton's formula, dmv over dt equals to, if your mass is constant, you can take it out, m dv over dt, equals to ma, which is what? Which is force based on Newton's second law. So the moment, the rate of change of momentum here 
or momentum flow rate that goes out of the domain is row 2 v2 square a2 minus row 1 the momentum flow rate that comes in minus row 1 v1 square a1 this is gonna be what this is the moment the rate of change of momentum is gonna be Sigma the total force in the X direction so now based on this I can estimate this FX so what's gonna be so the, the total uh, forces in the X direction we can write them as first the first force that we have is pressure gradient right so we have we might have different pressure here than a pressure here on the right okay so this is the first force that is kind of exerted on this uh, control volume here And then we have this external force. So this is another ex the force. So we have to write all the forces in the X direction that act on this large CV that we have defined. So the second one is external force, which is what we want. So force exerted by surfaces right and then we have viscosity forces also they play a role here and other forces okay so this is how you can estimate this fx uh, f external based on this velocity and writing this um, change of momentum and also you have one, another uh, equation for uh, conservation of mass. So you have two equations here. And then if you have more information, then you can estimate this F external. So this was just a quick way how these uh, large CVs can be applied. So in general, large CVs give integral or flux equations so they will give us if you if you draw a large cv it will give us the integral form of the equations or uh, flux form of them so these are like fluxes and i'm gonna uh, define what do we like what do i mean by flux and if you use a small CV, a small control volume, this gives us differential form of equation. Like those total derivatives that we had. Okay. So what we are going to do here is first we are going to investigate the integral form of equations like the uh, mass conservation and momentum conservation. And after that, using those integral forms and using the Reynolds transport theorem, we will convert them to differential equations. Okay. So now I'm going to... Give, a, ex, give an example of small CVs. So I gave an example of large CVs that how you can kind of apply a large CV and use uh, mass and um, momentum conservation. And now I'm going to use a small CV to drive the hydrostatic equation for pressure. And after that, we are going to formally use large CVs to drive the integral equations for mass and momentum in a general form, the integral form. Okay. So let's get started. So by the next topic, which is driving 
pressure hydrostatic equation using small CV or small control volume. Okay, so imagine we have a fluid at rest. So say we have a tank of water here. Here is the gravity. So we have a fluid, this fluid is at rest. So this means that the net of the total forces is gonna be MA, which equals to M times zero because it's at rest. So we have no acceleration. So it's just zero. So now I want to write the pressure distribution for a small CV. So I want to get or assume a small control volume for this fluid here, say somewhere in the middle of the fluid, and then bring it here and then write the forces that act on this small CV. So this is the coordinate system and then I have this small CV that I'm gonna draw it here okay so imagine that the pressure in the middle of that, this cube or a small control volume is P naught or P zero. This is small CV, here we have DX, here we have the Y and here we have DZ. And then we have two forces that act on this vertically act on this control volume so one is p at the top the other one is p at bottom the pressure at bottom and pressure at top of this uh, control volume okay so i want to use this sigma f equals to zero this is a fluid at rest so sigma f should be zero and write it in the z direction so in z direction i will use a taylor series expansion to write P top in terms of P naught or P zero. Okay, so if you use a Taylor series expansion, P top equals to P naught, which is the middle or the middle pressure plus dp over dz at o or origin or not times dz over 2 right so this is dz over 2 say so you want to write it based on here so you have dz over 2 
right? Plus the second term, which is going to be 1 over 2 factorial. So if you don't remember Taylor series, just uh, refresh your mind. It's something that you need to know from your calculus. So 1 over 2 factorial, d square p over dz square, evaluated at O or here. times dz over 2 square and then we have other terms that I'm not going to write it down. So similarly we can write the p bottom based on this Taylor series expansion in terms of p naught as p naught plus dp over dz evaluated at O, but now we have minus dz over 2, right, because we are going down now, so we have minus dz over 2, plus 1 over 2 factorial times d square p over dz square, evaluated at O, minus dz over 2, square and plus other terms okay so now if i want to write the sum of the forces which is f delta p is going to be p bottom, right, so how much we have p bottom in the positive direction of z minus p top, p top over, so these are pressures, we need to, we need to multiply them by this area, to get the uh, force, right? So I have to multiply by dx times dy this area to get the force at the top and bottom of this. So this is going to be what? So you just subtract p top from p bottom. So these two terms are going to cancel out. And then we have these two terms and these, the other two terms, these two terms are also going to cancel out, okay? So what we have is this is minus, and these two are going to add, right? So you have dp over dz evaluated at O times dz and then times dx dy, so I just write it as dx dy dz. And because this is a fluid at rest, so sigma, the total forces in the z direction should be zero. And what are the total forces are in z direction for this? So it's gonna be the difference in the pressure and the, we have also one more force. What is that? It's just the weight of this column of uh, control volume of water, right? So we have weight plus F delta P should be zero. And what is weight? So the weight is mass times g right mg 
And what is mass? Mass, I can write it as density of the water times its volume. So I can write it, the mass is going to be m times dx, dy, dz, right? So this is the volume of this. And the weight is in the negative direction of the z direction that I have considered in this uh, coordinate system. So I have minus, because it's in the negative direction, of rho density times dx, dy, dz. So this is volume times g. So this is weight. And then plus f delta p, which is going to be minus dp over dz. I just write it from here. O dx dy dz equals to zero. So these two volumes are going to cancel out from these equations, and what we have is dp over dz is going to be minus rho g. And this is the hydrostatic equation in fluids, which says that the pressure in this tank of water is changing as minus rho g. So the pressure It's minus rho g. So if you integrate it from, say, 0 to a height like h, you are going to get minus, the integral is going to be 0 to h of minus rho g. And so what you can write it like this. Before that, let me, okay. So you can write it as this, dp equals to minus rho g dz, and then integrate it from zero to say, let me do it from the other way. I think that would be better. So if you do it from here, say, to here. So let's call this uh, Z1 and Z2. So Z1 and Z2. This is going to give me rho g Z2 minus Z1 equals to p at z2 plus delta p. Okay, so this means that the change of pressure is going to be what is rho g and this is like the constant of integration okay so say um, we just care about gauge pressure so we can just remove that so this means that delta p is going to be rho g and say we, this distance is h so i can just write it that the amount of change of pressure is going to be rho g h so here you have rho g h pressure the pressure is higher than the surface so what's going to happen is this is kind of the linear change in the pressure so what we typically have is something like this that the pressure is going to increase as you go toward the end of the tank and so 
we have something like this. If you, for example, you want to say how much pressure here you have, this is gonna be the amount of pressure. So it's gonna kind of increase. So here we have zero pressure and then gradually it's gonna increase linearly. So here at the bottom, we have rho G and if this is the, the L, you have rho G L. This is the gauge pressure. So this is what we call the hydrostatic equation in a small, uh, uh, in uh, kind of uh, fluids at rest. And this way we, we were able to drive that using this small control volume concept. Okay, so I just wanted to s uh, show you how you can use this uh, small control volumes to draw the equations. But interestingly, what you notice now is that we use this small control volume and we draw a differential equation, right? So this is a differential equation. And if you use large control volumes like this, you are gonna get integral form of equations, okay? And I'm gonna use these large CVs in the next lecture to drive the mass conservation using uh, uh, in fluids. Just one thing I want to note is that if you write the sigma fx equals to sigma fy equals to z in the horizontal directions, because we don't have weight in the horizontal directions, what we are gonna get is f delta px equals to the pressure gradient in the delta x and delta px and delta py are gonna equal to each other, are gonna equal to zero. So this means that dp over dx equals to dy over dp over dy this equals to zero, okay? So this is what you get uh, in the horizontal direction if you are in a hydrostatic, uh, in a fluid at rest, and you have this hydrostatic equation. So these are all hydrostatic equations in differential form. So the pressure difference, the gradient of pressure in the vertical direction is gonna be minus rho g, and the gradient of pressure in the x horizontal directions are gonna be just zero. So let me wrap up and have a brief overview of what we learned here, especially this uh, in this lecture. So we started with acceleration in Eulerian field. So uh, we wanted to see what how we can represent the acceleration in Eulerian and Lagrangian fields. So we derived these equations and we got to this equation. So here, as you see, this is the Lagrangian acceleration, which is kind of the Newtonian formula and New in the no Newtonian approach. Here we have the Eulerian acceleration, which is partial V over partial T. And this is what we called convective acceleration, which happens, occurs because of the changes in space, in the acceleration that is due to space. And we talked about the steady flow concept that Steady flow means that this Eulerian acceleration is zero, but this doesn't mean that the total derivative or material derivative that you follow a particle in the flow is gonna be zero. Because, because for example, if you follow a twig in water, this twig, even though the fluid is steady, can speed up or slow down at some points. And then we talked about these, uh, the concept of large CVs versus small CVs. I showed an example of large CV, how you can use this large CV to kind of find an estimate of external forces that act on this, uh, to, uh, this fluid to keep it in place. So we wrote the uh, momentum and mass conservation using this large CV. And we kind of we got to this equation where we could kind of uh, uh, estimate F external by having the pressure forces and other formulas. And in general, again, large CVs are used when, 
we use them and we can by using them we can get and obtain the integral or flux form of the governing equations and uh, small cvs will help us to get the differential form of uh, governing equations and then i showed an application of using a small cv so for a fluid at rest we drive the pressure hydrostatic equations so these are the differential form which show the uh, differential form of uh, hydrostatic pressure equation in a fluid at rest which shows that the pressure in the vertical direction the gradient of pressure in the vertical direction is minus rho, rho, uh, rho g and the horizontal um, gradient of pressure the pressure uh, gradient in the horizontal direction of the pressure is just going to be zero for a fluid at rest okay so in the next lecture i'm going to use the large cvs to drive the mass conservation and also a continuity equation which is also called continuity equation and uh, then after that momentum equation in the integral form thank you very much everyone